Conversation Station Questionnaire Corner, where we open up a dialogue between us, get to know each other a little bit better week by week, developing that long-lasting foundation that's so crucial for friendship. As always, I have hand-selected the very best questions, unique, imaginative, creative questions to get your brain pumping juices flowing, and just like last week, I'm going to need to know the name that you'd like to be called, because our identities morph, they fluctuate like the seasons, they never remain the same. How could you keep one name and have it define you? Some weeks you're a Matilda, other weeks you could be a Frankie, right? For continuity purposes, I will be called flutes, because I like to make the algorithm happy with me, and it just works easier that way. However, your mission, should you choose to accept it, which I know you will, is to give me a new name every week, so what will it be? Oh, I like that one. But I like all I think that one's very relatable, even though sometimes it seems that maybe you're alone in that name. Everyone associates with it at some point, you know. Alright, what's the most exciting wildlife encounter that you have had in a non-wild setting? No, really? A bear? ripped through your moon roof in the middle of the night. Uh, wow. Were you scared? You were bummed. That's a bit more fitting. What did this bear smell? Was it your, your B.O. inside the car, or what was so alluring? Uh, Okay, you think it was a coffee cup? That simple syrup will do you in. And, um, how, how did you fix it? With duct tape. It is a tape of many purposes. Good thing you had that handy and on deck. I am really enjoying the vision that I'm having of you duct taping your moon roof back together. Although it was unfortunate, I'm very sorry that that happened to you. I just, I've never witnessed such a vivid scene of... <laughs> sorry, that's trying. I'm just picturing the duct tape coming out and like... <sighs> we should find that bear though. Give it a piece of our minds. I'm here for you. You need me. Most of my Wildlife encounters have luckily been in the wilderness, but I was dancing around my kitchen one evening and I have glass panel doors. I felt like I was being observed. You know that eerie feeling where you think something's watching you? It was at the base of the door where this pair of raccoon eyes, he was really into those dance moves. I had to file a restraining order. I had no other choice. It was creepy. Describe the most mesmerizing natural phenomenon you've ever witnessed. Oh man. You got to see the solar eclipse in Oregon. Oregon? Oregon? I have such trouble pronouncing that state. <laughs> okay, but I bet it was incredible. Okay, and 
and then the, the sun blocks out the moon, is that right? No, of course not, the moon blocks out the sun, okay, I got cold, and you got those cute little glasses. That's adorable. Once it was finished, they played Pink Floyd's Eclipse. That's a moment. And there were 12 indigenous leaders there who spoke about how it fit in with their culture. I bet you heard some really interesting takes on the eclipse then. That's so beautiful. Festivals are great. I've only been to a few, but they really foster a sense of community. We're on to the next question, but I'll let you know my natural phenomenon real quick. Uh, I've camped a lot. I was in Pine Mountain in California. It was nighttime. I was at the campground. My friend was in the bathroom. I was outside the bathroom, and I looked up, and the sky lit up as a blue fireball went streaking across it. It lasted long enough for me to start pounding on the door, going, oh, oh my god, oh, oh my god, oh my god. I couldn't even form words. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I said, you gotta come out, come out, come out, come out. They had, thought I was having an aneurysm, they had no idea, I couldn't even articulate what was happening, but it lasted about 10 seconds. It was the brightest thing I've ever seen. I feel like that would also be a sign in some indigenous cultures of something. Probably climate change, it was just signifying, hey, you're gonna fry in a hot tub ocean soon. Oh, jeez. But yes, it was marvelous. Space, Earth, there are so many majestic scene settings and experiences to be had, and I'm glad that we're both getting a taste of them, because sometimes I think people forget. I need to adjust. Please excuse me for a second. What is the most peculiar or hilarious dream that you've ever had? Okay, alright, alright, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Clearly you've been waiting to get this off your chest. I'm here for it, I am ready. Just one step at a time, okay? You're in a classroom, and you're in front of There is a teacher there. She's got a crow on her arm, perched. And she she's beckoning you to look into the crow's eyes and send the color orange. Heat. Into the crow's eyes. And you're receiving blue ice back. Okay. Blue ice. You do it. You feel intimidated. I get that. I mean, I feel that that woman has some kind of motive. So, do you successfully do this exchange? You feel iciness in your stomach. She encourages you to try again. So you do, and this time you successfully send the heat. The crow's eyes glow orange. You feel icy again. And then you wake up. some chills listening to that. I can't even begin to unpack what that might mean. I wish I was a dream expert or something because, yeah, 
my crown is tangling, I'm getting vibrations, like, what on earth, what on astral, what, what could that be? Mine is not as whimsical by any stretch, it's peculiar, um, I was on the 14th floor of a high rise in what I believe was New York City, and I stepped out into this apartment filled with a a semicircle of women on the couch. They were discussing their love lives, and it had just reached the final woman on the couch. She was vague about her affairs, um, withholding a little bit, and suddenly she said she had a video, but the sense was that it was a bit taboo whatever she had. She leaned forward and showed us, and it was an overhead shot of Michael Sarah in a baby blue loungewear, giving himself a wedgie. And then it pivoted to a wide angle of Michael Sarah, again, rubbing his right foot on the face of a couch, while eye-locking with the camera. His face was in a state of guilty pleasure. That's the best way that I could describe that. And then I woke up. I, I've never thought about Michael Sarah, <laughs> other than maybe when I saw him in a movie a long time ago. And I have no idea what that could possibly mean. I don't want to know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't want to go there. I subliminally, no idea. We're going to pause for a plane. If you could have a conversation. What age would you want to talk to, and what would you ask? 66. It's a good number. Double digits. And you're asking, is the front door green? That's all you want to ask? Is that a coat? Only you can understand that answer. You're not willing to share. Got it. I respect, I respect you. I respect that. You don't have to tell me. But maybe you want to. Okay, alright, alright. Yeah, I'll drop it, I'll drop it. Um, I would visit my future self. Do you have a front door? Do you have a place to live? Um, are you riding around in a dune buggy yet? Are you part of a self-sustainable creative community? Is there fresh air to breathe? You know, stuff like that. What's the most unusual habit that you have that people find surprising? You have to remove your outdoor clothes as soon as you enter the house and change into new indoor clothes. Because it feels icky. can be unpredictable out there. Yeah, absolutely. Now when you go to friends' homes, do you also bring a change of clothes? No. They can keep the egg. Got it. Yeah. The more the merrier with the egg, right? For them. So, if I visit, I should bring a comfy change of cute clothes. 
Oh, you, you provide, you, you'll, you'll provide my set of clues. Okay, well, I'm, I'm a small to a medium, so, uh, plan on that, because I'll be by. I don't have a germ fixation, although I probably should, uh, Excuse me for a second. Do you ever just oh, have your foot fall asleep? And you just got up. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. My unusual habit that surprises most people is twofold. Both exist in the kitchen, and when I go for a snack, I'm my spaciest, I guess, because I'm no cabinet doors open and completely forget to close them. I have no recollection that I have even done that until someone asks, why is the pantry door open? And I'm like, um, yeah, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> and also, I only have very few close friends that have witnessed this, but when I do get my snacks, and I am feeling particularly comfortable. I find a strange ease in keeping the refrigerator door open while I eat my snacks. I have no idea where that came from. It must be tied to Michael Sarah and YG somehow. I don't know, but I would love to know the correlation. I need to hire someone to deconstruct. Strange idiosyncrasies. If you could transform into any animal for the day, which one would you pick and what would you do? Anywho. A beluga whale. You would play around with how they communicate. They click, they whistle, chirp, and squeal. What? What? I had no idea. No. Really? They have their own unique vocal dialect. Each beluga whale. That's how they identify each other. What? What? The earth. I would see the speed I would feel and the heights that I could reach and just feel totally chill. It doesn't matter if I fall out of here because I could fly. What a day. If you could have a conversation with an AI or a robot that has a human level intelligence, what would you talk about? What is the barometer for human level intelligence? My hope is that there's some charisma with this particular AI slash robot and that it's more than just something that's spitting Wikipedia at you, you know? Oh, you would talk about parasitic mind control. Okay. Strange cases of organisms 
manipulating each other as your go-to. Is there a master plan there? Are you using reverse psychology on this AI slash robot? Oh, it's just a light conversation topic for you. Are you a Scorpio? Jesus, and it's something that I have never explored myself, but I'm very curious about what makes a cheese creamy versus crumbly, how do microbes add or detract from the flavor profile, it would really fulfill some sort of Taurus needs that I might have, so, you know, we can balance each other out there. If you could give any famous artwork, which one would you choose, and what would you ask it? The Scream by Edward Munch. The Scream. I mean, that's a pretty Scorpio answer. You would ask it what it's so freaked out about. What do you think it's so freaked out about? Fresh. You don't know, that's why you would ask it. I think it's just saw a spider or something. I would choose The Garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch. There's so much going on there, and I wonder where did it all come from? Is this some sort of dimension that simultaneously coexists that we can't? necessarily see, or you've never seen it, you have to google it, or look it up somehow, because it is a trip. We're on our final few questions now. If you could instantly become an expert at any musical instrument, what would it be, and why? Guitar. Wow, you really caught me off guard. It's a practical instrument. You've got a practical side to you. Even better. Yes, there are so many use cases for it. It's in demand. Wow. Oh, you generate a lot of income with it, huh? I, I would play the theremin. of an instrument that I need to maintain such rigorous control of my hands in order to conjure the correct sounds that I'm searching for. And it sounds so otherworldly that it really just beckons me. What if all the colors in the world suddenly turned into smells? You would stay away from the color brown. You just have a gut sense that it would smell, or what? <laughs> it does seem like a smelly color. I would just be overwhelmed by all the color combinations that are out there. They'd be creating something heinous or lovely, but it would be an onslaught. I would need to lie down. I would need to go into a colorless box, I think, and slowly be introduced to this new experience. But as long as brown's not part of it, you're good, right? <laughs> I'll have what you're having. Yeah, you could redesign the human body. Which quirky features or adaptations would you include? Six more fingers. A second nose. Eyeballs on the feet. A third nipple. And wings. That's a 
sounds a little monstrous. I don't know if I would want to be in a world that you were designing humans for, no offense. I am not sure I could handle it, especially if the colors or smells do. I'd be out. I, I would uh, reshape humans to have the features of skin that can chameleon itself to any landscape and the ability to grow fur or grow taller or shrink at will. swim underwater. Also have permeating night vision. Maybe we can collaborate. I can't imagine your humans with my humans' features. Regular humans as we know it would be absolutely destroyed. We have our final question now. If you could communicate with clouds, what message would you send across the sky? Strange symbols to bug everyone out. Great. Pure chaos. I would in big giant letters, send help, send help. I would put it up every day until the right entities saw it and understood that we need help. Do you think it would work? I can only help. Well, this has given me a lot to think about and mull over. As always, it's been such a pleasure having you here. I'm really happy that you could make it. I am so thankful that you're alive. And I will see you next week, same time, same place. Bring your party pants, because it's gonna be a party. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I will see you soon.